my dear sweet Aquarius I know this video is hell late it was supposed to have went out on February the 1st but life happened <laughs> and I'm just now able to get it recorded so February uh, what is this February 2023 this is your Aquarius um, reading for the rest of this month uh, let's see we're gonna do a pick a power reading and see what we can find out from my dear sweet Aquarius my name is Queen Oset Haru and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius if you haven't already please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell also if you like this video Please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to anybody and everybody who might like it too. Uh, leave us a positive comment in the comment section. And if you want to get a reading done, please email me or hit me up on social media. I would love to do a reading for you. All that information is underneath this video. Also underneath this video will be the link to this cool mat underneath everything you can see i have a mat underneath here i got that from ascension life brand if you would like to take a look at it and get one for yourself the link will be there i will also put all of the decks that i used in this video in case you would like to purchase them let's get started so first you got to pick your pile pile one is with the damn bright pile two is with the age of aquarius crystal and pile three is with the mermaid crystal Pick which pile is yours, and then I'm going to tell you what your pile says for you. All right, let's go to pile one. Pile number one, you have the Ten of Cups for the rest of February. This is an awesome card. This is a card that's really talking about family. This is a family card. It's about spending time with your family, talking to your family, working positively and diplomatically through issues with family. It's all to do with the, the energy. And this can be your like immediate family, like your, your wife and your kids or your husband and your kids or your girlfriend and your, your boyfriend and your children. Or it could be just the two of you or it could be your whole family, a nuclear family. It just depends on what's going on in your personal life um, for those of you who do not have you know biological family it could be your adopted family or friends who have become family something like that um, it could be about uh, learning about your genealogy or your ancestral history through like ancestry.com or something like that but this card is always about your connection your blood or spiritual emotional connections with people you consider to be or who are your family so if you haven't talked to your mama in a while, this would be a great time to give her a call. Or if you haven't talked to that, you know, that long lost cousin that you really do like, but you're always too busy. Call him up over the weekend. Go have a drink. You know, just little small gestures like that is more than enough. Take your kids to the playground. You know, something very small like that is what they're talking about. Now, pile number one, you also got uh, the let loose card. So that's interesting. Maybe you need to go have some drinks with your family. Maybe you got some cousins or some sisters or something like that. But I'm going to read it what it says to you. Everyone knows that Mardi Gras is the celebration of all celebrations. If this card has shown up in your reading, that means it's time to let loose and forget all of the obligations that have been plaguing you. Even if just for a few hours, your ability to experience fulfillment and enjoyment in the moment has been compromised due to overthinking, managing life's obligations, and experiencing a lack of joy in your day-to-day -day life. This current imbalance has started to affect your generally positive outlook, and it is time for some revitalization. Cut loose even just a little and see how much it positively affects your energy and overall outlook. So you guys need to have some fun. <laughs> yeah, this is a car. It's the weekend. It's time for it. It's the freaking weekend. You know, have some fun. And I think, wasn't Mardi Gras just a, like, isn't it now? Isn't this like carnival season or something like that? I don't know much about it, but I think it's around this time of the year. Now you're this third card that's your third card it's called rainbow wings all right beautiful card i'm going to look it up and then i'm going to show it to you i want to see here it is right here isn't that beautiful 
power one, that's you. I don't know what it's about, <laughs> but that's you. I'm going to read it to you. A rainbow is the aura of an angel's wings, which shines even in the midst of storms. It lifts the spirit and gives us hope. Rainbows shine light into our hearts. Awaken the child within you and remind yourself of the beautiful and simple things in life. By guiding you to this card, the angels are confirming that you are on the right path. They ask you to keep focused on your dreams and to honor your inner child by doing more of that which brings joy to your life. So you got two messages, Power One, about joy. So a lot of you ain't having no fun. Y'all not enjoying yourselves. You're Like they said in that first card, you're not letting your hair down. It's time to revitalize. You're working too hard. So you're getting double messages about this. So for a lot of you, this pile really is going to be important. Um, they ask you to keep focused on your dreams and to honor your inner child by doing more of that which brings joy into your life. Even though you may be experiencing some setbacks, you are urged to continue to follow your heart. Do not give up hope and for all, and for all will soon fall into place. Draw a picture of a rainbow and pin it to your wall. Imagine yourself protected and guided by your rainbow. Ask your angels to light your path and guide you in all you do. Sit quietly and imagine yourself surrounded and infused with the beautiful healing colors of your rainbow. Its healing vibrations will inspire you to pursue your dreams. As soon as I read that, the first thing that came to my mind for that one was um, using like color therapy. You know, people often will use like, you know, things that they line up with their chakras and things like that. Um, art therapy comes up with that too. So I think that is really beautiful, Power One. Power One, this is your last one. It is card number six. All right, so we're gonna find card six. Now this is a very interesting deck that I got uh, from Etsy and it has a huge guidebook with it. And um, I like it because as you can see from there, I like the colors. The law of faith is this one. Faith is a word that has been distorted that humans have forgotten its essence. I do not want to be fooled. I have to be wise and practical. I do not want to dream. I do not want to believe in something that can't exist and feel deceived. These beliefs may be caused by past disappointments or mass indoctrination. Creating a sense of mistrust in the world and a sense of insecurity and vulnerability. Faith is believing that we are part of a big universe where everything makes sense. It's not a belief that comes from mind, but a feeling, a bond that starts from the heart. Mind and thought reinforce faith or silence it. We want to believe, think, faith with our head, but faith is a feeling and it expands through the opening remembering of the heart to respect this law we need to make a choice believe and example and risk being wrong but at the same time i can feel surrounded and connected do not believe and example and risk living with fear of not controlling what surrounds me the fear of the future i will plan everything just in case with faith we accomplish what is possible what is your perception of faith? Is your heart open to faith, to other dimensions? Is there a fear, a curiosity? How can you cultivate faith daily? Hmm. So those last ones you can use if you want to use them for a uh, like a journal, like journaling, that would be really cool. Um, but basically the overall gist of it, the law of faith is to have faith um, instead of allowing yourself to live in fear. So any of you out there in, for pile one, if you find yourself losing your faith, um, it's time for you to tap back into that energy. And if you're somebody who has a exuberant amount of faith, then you're somebody who needs to pass that energy on to others. Awesome job. 
all right that is all for pile number one you got some pretty good cards it seems like to me pile number one a lot of you might be having some issues because all of these cards here indicate issues um especially like you know three of them and one of them is like hey go hang out <laughs> go enjoy yourself you're worrying too much so some of you i feel like are worrying and worry is the opposite of what, what you want to do based on a card you got today now we're going to go to uh pile number two this is the pile all right you got the seven of pentacles reversed i'm going to put it in the upright so you can see it and i can explain it to you but remember it came out reversed for you the seven of pentacles reversed pile number two means that you're either not putting in enough effort into your manifestations or you are putting an effort and your manifestations are still not coming to fruition. It's one of the two. So you have to look at your effort. So if you're putting in all the effort that you possibly can, and I'm talking about physical and emotional effort, because any manifestation you have, you want to do the spiritual work, obviously, the law of attraction work, you know, the candle magic, whatever it may be. But you have to also put in the practical work. For example, well, somebody said to me once they were looking for a job, right? And I said, okay, cool. That's what's up. And they asked me if I would do prosperity candles for them. And I said, of course. You know, we talked about the price. We talked about how long they wanted them to do them. And I said, so how long have you been looking for a job? And the person said, I've been waiting, you know, to get a job for, you know, a couple months now. And I said, well, okay. So I did the work for this person. And... A month later, I asked them, did they get a job? Because by that point, they should have had something, even even in some interest, something. And they said, no, not yet. And I said, well, how many jobs did you put in for? And he said, I got to put in for jobs. And I was like, yeah. And he said, oh, I thought that somebody would just call me with a job. <laughs> And I started to laugh and I was like, I know that magic on television works like that, but that's not how it works in real life. I do the, the work and then you do the practical, the physical work. So putting in applications, typing up your resume, you know, those kind of things going on, you know, going on interviews. Those are the kind of practical things he needed to do. And he didn't expect that. He expected somebody to just call him magically since I was doing magic and say, hey, got a job for you. And that's not how it works. So, Paul, too, that's what it's saying here. It's saying that you're not putting in enough of that physical effort. You know, some effort somewhere It's either the physical effort or it's the spiritual law of attraction effort. And if it's the law of attraction effort, I strongly suggest you watch The Secret or watch Abraham and um, Esther Hicks on YouTube and get into that law of attraction energy. Now, if you're doing everything that you need to do spiritually and physically and your manifestations are still not coming to you, you may have some kind of blockage and you need to get a reading and find out what that is. So that's your seven of pentacles. Now, let's take a look and see what you got. Ooh. Yes, yeah, so you got the success card. So this is telling us that you're on the precipice of the success that you want. There's just something that there's not enough of and that's why it's not happening. Success can often feel like a fleeting goal if we become too fixated on accomplishing a specific outcome in a specific way. True success is not measured by outer accomplishments, but by inner feelings and that indicate personal growth and movement in the right direction. This card is shown up in your reading because although you may not yet have reached your goal in its entirety, there are many smaller milestones, signs and opportunities you have experienced that are proof you have been on the right track. By remembering to take a moment to appreciate and celebrate these large and small markers, the energy of gratitude and inspiration will eventually lead you to where you want to be. It may help you realize that you may already be there and are ready for something new. So many of you, like I said before, are at the precipice of everything that you want to manifest. Just look and see what are you not doing. And if you're doing anything, look for blockages. And if you don't have any blockages, that means you just need more patience. Music of the spheres. Let's see. Is that what that says? Spheres? Yeah, music of the spheres. 
All right, we're going to find it. And I'm going to read it to you. You're about to enter a positive and fertile period through which you will discover the secret of living an inspired and fulfilled life. See, again, that success. So, Pile 2, you're right there. You're right there, Pile 2. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't stop, Pile 2. You're right there. Your angels and guides want you to know that while they understand that your journey has often been difficult and perhaps even painful, the next phase of your life that is about to unfold will be one of wonderment and joy. You have reached a level of consciousness let's see, that will easily support you through the coming time, the culmination of which will see you resonating to a higher and finer frequency. Music can help you access and more easily attune to these higher frequencies. Listening to music that inspires and moves you will awaken sacred truths which have long been forgotten. Because these ancient truths stem from a higher vibration, they can only be accessed through the vibrations of sound. You cannot verbalize this knowledge because it is multidimensional in nature. However, you can attune to it as your vibration is raised and through this you will discover new ways of looking at the world. You will become a source of wisdom and inspiration for many who will cross your path simply because of the energy and vibration you hold. The new energy you are about to access will surface as a deep inner knowing, bringing a new perspective on life. In the future, you may wish to use this energy to help others access these sound vibrations. Reiki or other similar vibrational modalities are an excellent aid in this process. So everything here looks, in my opinion, really good. It just looks like there's going to be some more time. Awesome. Awesome, Pile 2. Ooh, Pile 2, you got a heart. What does your heart say? Okay, let's go. I love hearts. Okay, and it's really short too. It's not even long. It says, this is where the intention of the soul lies. It is the motor of earth life. He gives direction to the actions. So for this one, that is beautiful. I'm going to make sure that we read everything for that one. Because that one is talking about getting into your heart center. Um, connecting with others in your heart. It's all about the heart, the heart chakra, looking to make sure that you have an open heart, all those kind of things. And we read everything for heart. Yep, that's everything. So it's all about tapping into that heart energy. Awesome. All right, now we're going to go into pile number three. Let me get these out the way. Three, let's flip you around. Ooh, three. You got the tower, three. The tower card, let me scooch this over. Some people are terrified of the tower card. But for me, I've never been afraid of it. Because every time I get the tower card, my life does change. But it changes for the better. And that's what this card is about. The tower card is about a sudden, unexpected change that comes out of nowhere. But it's not a bad change. It's like, for example... You have a beat up old car and your car is on its last leg and you can't afford a new car and you get into some type of a fender bender and the car or some type of accident or something happens to the car a tree falls on it, for example, and now the car is total, but you have the insurance money and you can now buy a new car. It's that kind of a thing that will happen to me with the tower card. It's some type of breakdown of something old or some old situation. Like, for example, a boyfriend or girlfriend may break up with you and you may be devastated. But at the end of the week, you meet a new person that makes you feel like you've never felt before. It's always something old that breaks or goes away. It could be a thing or a relationship or a situation, even a job. You could have a job that you hate, that you've been holding on to for the past six years, and you can get fired. And you'd be like, oh, my God, this is awful. But nah, because you were home that day, you were able to find a new job online that pays more. 
so it's always that kind of energy of like something old br broken down washing away it's usually something that was built on a shoddy foundation anyway and usually for me it was something i didn't even want to do anymore and now something new that's better has come along so that's really going to be interesting to see how that plays out in your life aquarius all right let's take a look at this pile three Ooh, we got the step back card. Let's scooch this over and let's give it a read. Oftentimes we can get so caught up in the details of what's going on in our lives that we can no longer see things clearly. Just as taking a step back from a picture to see it more clearly can be helpful, it is now necessary to step back from your current situation in order to see what's going on more clearly by allowing yourself to look at the situation from the outside in you will be able to take in more of the bigger picture in order to come up with a solution that is not only more solid and in flow but also more empowering so you got to just step back if you have any situation in your life Right now is the time to just step back and just say, you know what? Let me not make any moves. Let me just think about this and see which way I want to go. Now, this is hard to make stand up. So I'm going to just put it right there. Uh, this says lost in your own equations. Hmm. That should be interesting. Let's see. You may be feeling confused at present because something doesn't seem to add up. There is no point wasting any more valuable energy trying to figure it out. Remember that everything in life is constantly changing. And see, since you got the tower, this is reminding me like something old is definitely going to change. To a large degree, the confusion you feel is a result of you not accepting life as it is. Trust that all unfolds in perfect timing. And there is a divine reason and purpose to all that transpires or does not transpire in the world. There is no need to fear that which you cannot control or understand. Let go and live just one day at a time. Accept the current events as they follow. Trust there is always a higher purpose and a natural order of things. You are forever connected to that great source of love from which all creation stems. Now, remember when I talked about at first, it may seem like a disaster. So you have to trust that everything is going to be okay. That's exactly what I was talking about. Meditate and focus on the beauty inside of you. Open your heart and experience the overwhelming love that exists within and around you. All will eventually work out well and peace and clarity will follow. Trust. So again, we're getting that same type of message you know they're repeating it in different ways with that vibration so you're going to be fine oh let's see what this one is 56 okay this is your last card it's number 56 56 all right 56 it's not one it says envy envy goes beyond jealousy it is wanting what the other possesses and even wanting to take it away from them. It's a feeling of lack and injustice. Why him and not me? This emotion pushes us to work, to act, to realize our dreams. Me too. I can do it. It is a mirror of our dreams and our disappointments. So this card is saying that you're either envious of another or others or someone is envious of you. If you're the one who is envious, it means that there are things that your spirit, your soul wants to create. For example, if you're envious of your, you know, family member's new home, it's because your spirit wants to manifest, wants to create a new home for yourself. That's all it means. So based on the, um, this particular card, it's telling you, look and see, are you envious of anyone or anything? And then tune, fine tune yourself your emotions, your vibrations to go after that thing for yourself. And if you're not envious, 100% certain, then you may have someone who is envious of you. Now, mind you, they need to do the same thing. They need to go after what they know. But if you identify someone who is envious of you, 
that is something that you need to be aware of. An envious person can harm you. I remember um, I was looking the other day and they were talking about how this famous rapper, um, his uh, so-called, his he thought was his friends, um, set him up, you know, and they shot him and killed him. And that all stemmed from envy. They envied the money he had. They envied the fame that he had. You know, they wanted it for themselves. They wanted to take it. That's why they said it was more than jealousy. Jealousy is just looking at it with the stank face like, mm. but envy is actually like they don't deserve it. I deserve it. And maybe I'm going to take it. And that's what happened to this particular rapper. So if you know that people are envious of you, those are not the kind of people to keep around. Seriously, because some of them will not do this advice. They won't go for what they know. They won't go for their own. They'll try to take it from you. So you taking it from someone is not acceptable and someone taking it from you is not acceptable. So be very careful with this envy energy um, and try to follow what they said if it is indeed in your heart. Because you can have those things too. There's nothing that anybody has that you cannot accomplish for yourself if it's in your cards. Nothing you can't manifest, you know, if it's in if it's in your vibration. For example, anybody should be able to manifest a decent home. Anybody should be able to manifest, you know, um, positive feelings. You know, if they if they work on meditations and things like that. Um, there's certain things that you can manifest. And, and a lot of things you can manifest, you just don't think you can. I used to want these uh, Cabbage Patch Kids. It was two of them. Um, it was Michelle and Barack Obama. They were uh, custom made by someone and they were on eBay. And they were $1,000 for both of them. Now, I felt as though $1,000 is quite a lot to pay for two dolls, okay? <laughs> so, I thought to myself, I could never have them. They were too expensive. I would never be able to have them. Well, right now I'm sitting here looking at them and they're in my dining room because I did manifest them. I stopped thinking I could not have them and started thinking, mm, what if I could have them? What circumstances? Well, if the price was good, I could I could purchase them. And I finally got the um, person, the seller, to sell them to me at a price I was willing to pay. And now they're here. Once I stop thinking, I can't have this, I can't manifest this, I can't do this, and I just started to change it just a little bit and say, hmm, what if I could? What would it look like? How could it happen? And that's when it happened. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of times it's us that holds ourselves back. And I did this recently. This wasn't a long time ago. And I already know better. I know the law of attraction. But I still was saying, realistically speaking, this is something I can't afford. But it was like, well, does the price have to be that high? Well, no. They could change it if they want to. It wasn't like it was on sale at Target. It was an independent buyer. So it was like, I'm telling myself I can't have something for something that is actually changeable. But I didn't realize it at the time. So for a year, I wanted them, wanted them, wanted them, wanted them. And it wasn't until I figured that out that I actually got them. So it is what it is. <laughs> you guys come back soon because I got a lot more to say. See you later.